hello and welcome back to my uh, channel. Here we go, it's day one. Uh, I'm going to try to do something a little different. I'm not going to go in with any perceived plan. At this point I'm just making some marks. Just seeing what uh, maybe something will come out of it. So just using it and moving paint around and making I'm noticing some marks when I move the, uh, the brayer leave some brayer marks let's just flip this right over stick it right on there so yeah in this video it's just uh, purely me and my struggles I just really wanted to make something with no real plan just attacking it I pulled out a bunch of old art materials that I have and tools and just a bunch of stuff so I decided, hey, why not? Let's just draw this skull. And then I realized quickly that uh, I need to do it on the plate. What am I doing? Just drawing it directly on the paper. So this whole experiment was, what can I do with this gel plate? I realized that I had to draw this backwards. And so then that became a little bit of a challenge, but quickly realize that yes I can just draw this backwards and this is just me trying to redraw the skull um, knowing that I'll probably end up covering what's what I had already drawn underneath so it didn't really matter but yeah I'm using a big king size sharpie marker right directly onto the gel plate Just trying to see if I can distress it a little bit more or remove a piece of here and there. Didn't quite like it. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. Now I'm going to add some color to this and build up some layers. I really liked how the brayer kind of does that so I was learning that it does make some interesting marks I do like just how it sort of creates these little bubbly ovaly shapes so I tried to see if I could use it to my advantage And it's kind of neat how it just kind of repeats. So I'm liking that. I'm thinking, well, if I can retain that, I can use the dryer to dry it off. And I try to dry it as much as I can. Yeah, it's still wet in certain spots. Now I could have kept going and dried it, waited a little longer, but I grew impatient, so. Here we go, let me just add some more color in there and maybe I just don't go over those areas. Maybe just fill the skull with some white. And once again, I was kind of sort of liking that, that the way it was looking, but I was like, nah, I'm just gonna smooth it over. And then I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna go right over in spots, but leave it still semi-textural with some of the brayer marks. And I grabbed a pencil to try to see if I could take some of it out. And yeah, no, not working. Not working. Let's just get rid of that. grabbed an old sharpie marker I have no idea how old this thing is it's, I mean it's definitely several years old and I've used sharpie markers obviously and uh, 
yeah, this thing was just either dry or it just wasn't reacting really well to the gel plate, so let's just abandon that. But I did buy a Sharpie marker and I thought, hey, I can use that. I know it works, I just got it, so it should be fine and I've used it before. So I'm trying to figure out what can I do with these spaces that I know will actually show up because if I draw it right on the white it's going to be behind the paint so it might not show up but I also wanted to see what areas could and maybe not so I'm just sort of loosely making some random marks here and there never know what these are going to do it's just sort of mark 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 So I think at this point I decided let's uh, pull this. Let's see what we get. But I need to add another layer. Dry this and make sure it's dry. And then I'm gonna add this layer of this uh, kind of this greenish mint green color. And use that as the base. So this will be in the background, but it'll lift all of this stuff onto the paper. I'm using this uh, sketch pad on the side. Um, I saw someone else do it on YouTube and I thought that was kind of a cool idea and I can utilize utilize some of that for the uh, for a different project where I can do some collaging. So right now I'm just building up a whole bunch of those on that pad over there that you see on the right. So yeah, I didn't want it to sit too long, but yeah, I'm going to put some some books on it and apply some and let it sit for at least, I don't know, five to ten minutes. So it didn't sit forever, like sometimes I'll leave it for 30 minutes just to be safe, but with this one I just, I knew the paint wasn't too super wet, but at the same time I didn't want it to lift. Um, but yeah, pulls up pretty clean. So with this, I was pretty happy with the results, but it wasn't quite what I was going after originally. So I'm kind of studying it and decided I'll make a few more marks here and there. And this is pretty much like a highlighter, but it's a little dauber. And I picked up, I don't know how long ago, many years ago. And I've always used it just, as you're seeing, just little dots here and there. But as you can see, it kind of takes forever to sort of dry. And when it does dry, it usually does tend to kind of fade a little bit. But I couldn't wait, so I just used a roller to sort of roll it out. But it's kind of neat that it left the little faint dots. I was thinking, hmm, let me uh, use some of this yellow. <laughs> it's a, it's a uh, transparent, uh, almost like, almost like a fluorescent yellow. So I knew it was still going to be transparent, and it wouldn't matter that I put it on there, but it would add a little more color to it, a little more depth. But I also noticed that the marker is still very strong and I'm trying to figure out a way to sort of push it back a little bit. And uh, so I know this, this yellow paint is a little bit more opaque. And it starts to add a little more, um, yeah, a layer on top of it. So it's starting to give it a little more, a little more depth going on. And then once that's dried, I pulled out this, I don't know what it is exactly, it's like a, almost like a, a paint oil marker. Um, but I picked this up a few years ago. And it pretty much dries, um, really dry. 
and um, it doesn't smudge or anything. Uh, but it has like a cool sort of distress crayon looking uh, effect. But it's not really waxy. Yeah, and I put some some of this white that I, uh, yeah, and, uh oh. <laughs> I was like, oh boy, okay, well, let's just cover it up some more. Yep, and I've entered the point of no return. Yeah, so. Yeah, so then at this point I'm uh, really debating and regretting kind of my decisions, but let's just press on. So once that's dried, I decided let's try something different. And I don't know, I was trying to think of like maybe these vines or plant-like things are kind of growing out of the skull. Like it's been there for a while. And uh, yeah, then I drew this little mushroom guy, which I call Mushroom Guy. He's uh, kind of one of the many characters that I've drawn over the years, and I like him. He's just a mushroom with two legs and no arms, no eyes, no anything else. And he's got a little crown. So I'm trying to bring the skull back out a little bit more because it was getting really lost, but I also didn't want it to be 100% like it was, so I like kind of the effect that it, it has sort of a ghosting behind it and some layers. And I grabbed some green to try to fill in the leaves and use a palette knife to move it instead of a brush just to give it another effect. Yeah, not really liking it. And I'm getting a little tired. All right, day two. So I let this sit for a while and I sort of slept on it, as you could say. And I sort of had this radical idea to remove this whole image. Yep, and there I go. I wanted it to have sort of that dry brush look to it, um, but not that dry. The Sharpie markers tend to keep bleeding through over, like once it sits longer, it'll just start to bleed back through. Then I decided, how about a big red X? Just because I'm a little disappointed. And I just wanted to do something very, almost destructive, almost a statement. But yeah, see how that, that marker is just still bleeding through, just eventually still comes through. But at the same time, it's interesting. I decided, yeah, I'll try some more of this transparent yellow. Maybe it'll brighten it up or something. I don't even know what I was thinking at this point. It was just throwing paint at the paper. Dry, dry, dry. So I'm building layers upon layers, and you can see the marker still bleeding through. So I know this this white will sort of cover it up. So I'm like, well, maybe I'll just go back over with white. And I was sort of liking the dots, but at the same time disappointed that they were just leaving dots like that. But then I'm Adding a few more, thinking like, huh, well maybe more dots this way and that way. It's kind of interesting. But yeah, it was a mistake. 
<laughs> what can you do? Lots of drying because it's this stays wet. For a while. Yeah, let's just bring this red back. I'm actually using a brighter red. But I noticed that the the white was pushing back the skull marker. But yeah, it was at this point I knew I messed up. Now, how do I fix this? Maybe I'll add some of this light blue purpley color. I was hoping it would sort of uh, multiply over it and uh, make it a little more darker. But as you can see, it's a little more uh, opaque and it retains its color. But it definitely was pushing that sort of skull image behind. And it was definitely disappearing. Lots of layers, lots of drying. Dry, dry, dry. So I decided, you know what? I have this image and I want to use it and I think this will fit. I think it'll just fit really nicely on that on that uh, cross or that uh, X. But because it's a negative image, so it, it could work on a dark background. So I'm using using this uh, acrylic golden acrylic fluid uh, paint or fluid acrylic. And uh, it actually works really well with these laser transfers. But as you can see, it starts to beat up on the uh, gel plate, um, which actually is kind of a cool effect. It um, gives it almost a distressed look into the lines. So I let this sort of sit for, gosh, maybe 12, 15 seconds or so. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I like how, see how it kind of distresses onto the image a little bit? Feels a little broken up. Um, and it's meant to kind of look like a woodcut image. Uh, it was uh, an image that was actually created in Mid Journey uh, as a AI generated image. Um, so I've been dabbling with that since last October. And um, I have all kinds of ideas and thoughts. So yeah, I've had this in sort of my library of images. Um, I didn't quite like the purpley blue color. I felt like the white sitting on top of it wasn't going to be, it, it was going to kind of get lost a little bit. So I decided why not just make it a black X and really make it a darker backdrop for this image. Using the roller again, I really liked how it just felt sort of distressed. But it needs a little bit more. And I started to get a little more aggressive with it. And really just showing how much I disliked <laughs> where this thing was going. But I knew once this image got on there, I could kind of salvage this thing. Uh, but yeah, I debated for a long time about making this video or continuing or even sharing it. Um, so 
once again, it's just really internal struggles going on in my head of what am I doing and uh, why did I do this or why did I do what I did because I could have stopped a long time ago and this could have been a totally separate image so it would have had two images but I can see right now like that's gonna that's gonna pop that's gonna work really well now what's the meaning behind it I have no meaning a lot of people ask, like, what does this mean to you? And what, you know, sometimes it just really doesn't. Um, but maybe it's, maybe it's a sort of representation of my internal struggles or, you know, I don't know. I'll let you decide. You interpret this. I'll let the viewer interpret it. So yeah, I'm using a gel medium. It dries clear, basically like a clear acrylic paint. A lot of people use it for different reasons. Yeah, when you're using a gel plate and you're using an image like this and you just don't want to use another layer of paint, you can use the gel medium. Once it sort of reactivates the white, I like to actually flip when I'm doing this, I like to actually rub the uh, paper on the back side versus the other way around that you're seeing. Um, once again, I'll you know add some more pressure onto that and make sure all the air bubbles and every and that the paper has made contact with the gel plate um, before I put some weight on. So I've been using this Betty Crocker uh, cookbook and a lot of my videos on Instagram and whatnot and it uh, it it's become kind of a almost a signature where you recognize uh, one of my pieces and uh, I gotta say the, the cookbook belongs to my oldest daughter um, she left it here for me to look at and I just needed some weight and I just happened to have it <laughs> laying around and uh, yeah, there you go. There's the image. Um, hope you like it. Hope you learned something. There's some uh, detailed shots. Enjoy. Thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it yeah give me a thumbs up subscribe for more um, i have a lot of other ideas that i'm toiling with hopefully better than this one but yeah it's been real peace